Okay, so in this lecture, we, are, we will solve an isolated footing you know, using plate bending, a rectangular plate bending element. So, for example, I have this elevation of uh, footing. So, I got this reaction, 4,000 kilonewton, from, from my STAD model. And using a spreadsheet, I was able to design it by, uh, yeah, so about 3.6 by 3.6 by 0.7. So the required, the required depth or thickness is 700 or 0 0.7 millimeters. Oh, sorry, meters. Uh, round up by four meters square. Here's the reaction. So the maximum Fy is 39 or the round up going to 4,000 kilonewton. So at that, at this section with a bearing capacity of 450 kilopascal, SBC 455 kilopascal. I use 45, 455 kilopascal because um, the actual SBC is 350, but since the NSCP requires or allows us to increase by one third the capacity, so when you multiply that 350 by 1.3, that's about 455 kilopascal. Okay, now in STAAD finite element modeling, you need K or the, the K sub S or the subgrade modulus, modulus subgrade of the soil. Okay, so if I assume this as 450 kilopascal with an allowable settlement of say um, 450, Ten mm, say ten mm, so that's about 0 0.01 meters. I will be getting forty-five thousand kilonewton per cubic meters. Okay, and I'll just round it up to fifty thousand kilonewton per cubic meter. Okay. So I'm going to use uh, 50,000 kilonewton per cubic meter as my uh, subgrade modulus. Where is it? That one. Okay, 50,000 kilonewton per cubic meter. Now, uh, for the modeling, okay, so for modeling in STAAD, uh, but by the way, we are going to use MATLAB no? so using the same approach we used in SMAT. Now, remember in SMAT, uh, I have a code here that computes a, the, the stiffness matrix of the single element, right? So this one, and uh, so after computing the stiffness matrix of a single element, we're going to use this to in 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 obtaining the 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 globe the stiffness matrix of the whole uh, system, right? So. 
So this is a, so we have a four meter by four meter uh, system. Then our load will be somewhere in the middle. So that's our 4,000 kilonewton. And I decided to use uh, a mesh of, so of a 0.25 by 25 by 0.25 meters. Okay. Because uh, I already run this by one meter by one meter and uh, the result is not as, as near as the exact answer or the theoretical uh, answer. So we'll, be, we'll be using a 0.25 meter by 0.25 meter. So divided by four meter, we will have about um, 16, no? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. 12, 13, 14, 15. And another one here, say so here. So that's uh, 16, 16, okay, something like that. So that's how uh, fine mesh we will be doing. Okay. so on so forth anyway this is the the actual meshing so this is 0 0.25 by 25 meters as you see in our uh, dimension okay so that's uh, 0 0.25 by 0 0.25 meters okay because if you use a one meter by one meter it will not give you an accurate result. Okay. Now for the properties, it's uh, 700 mm. All right. That's 700 mm. All right. Remember, this is the, the dimension that we got from this spreadsheet. From this spreadsheet. No? The required thickness is 700 in order to, uh, to pass in the shearing stress, okay, because uh, the, the punching shear dictates the thickness of the footing, while the, the, the this dimension 3.6 or round up to 4 meters uh, will uh, dictate the, the stresses, no? so such that it will not exceed the 450 kilopascal bearing capacity. Okay, so this is it. So this is the actual mesh and the thickness is 700. Okay, so in our SMAT, if you notice, so we will be using, uh, to be consistent, we will be using those parameters. The width, 0.25 by 20, 0.25, the length, the elasticity of concrete, 21.7 gigapascal, the Poisson ratio 0.17, and the thickness of 0.7. And using this formula to obtain the stiffness matrix and the uh, phi inverse. Okay, remember this is our uh, formula of the stiffness matrix of the rectangular plate. Okay. So once you have that, so this is our required uh, stiffness matrix, okay? Now, in, a, in an elastic foundation, there, there will now be a, another, another uh, modification. So according to to finite element books, foundation engineering books like Joseph Bowes. So we need to incorporate the stiffness from the soil reaction. So remember, this is our uh, Joseph Bowes and Rao. 
another author. So remember, we can idealize the the soil subgrade modulus as a spring. Okay, so it says there that we need to incorporate this soil soil reaction to our stiffness matrix. So remember, once we we can uh, using uh, using the the equation that uh, we used, we can obtain the stiffness matrix of a of our mesh. You no, know? however. We need to incorporate the subgrade modulus or reaction from the soil. Okay, so the formula is this. The equivalent K or reaction will be the subgrade modulus multiplied by the, the, the area okay, or, or the contribution of each node. So remember, if we have a single plate, so there will be a contribution or a stiffness from the soil. So maybe it was this isometric view. Okay. So there will be a uh, an additional stiffness or spring due to the soil, and this has a um, the, its contribution will depend on the the dimension of our mesh okay so if we have a 0 0.25 meters by 0 0.25 meters mesh remember so what will now be its dimension so this will now be 0 0.125 okay so each node uh, I zoom in so each node of our plate will have an additional spring or stiffness using this formula by uh, uh, considering its, uh, its uh, tributary area. So in this case, per node has a 0.125 meter by 0.125, okay? So that's why, so remember our subgrade modulus that I, mean, uh, that I derived earlier is 50,000. Right? So, so this is 50,000 kilonewton per cubic meter multiplied by the tributary 0 0.125 by 0 0.125. So this is in meters, this is in meters, cancel. So we now have, uh, that will be, times 1, 2, 5, 781 okay, times 1,000. So 781.25 kilonewton per meter. Okay, so that will be the additional stiffness. Okay. Uh, now, since uh, my SMAT code is using Newton as my force unit, so I need to multiply this by 1,000. So that will be 781, 250 Newton per meter. That's why I have a number here, 781, 250. Okay. Now, uh, why do I add this to K11, K44, K77, K1010? Remember, uh, during our derivation of the stiffness matrix, so the, the stiffness of a single plate, is 12 by 12, right? So one, two, three, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's the size of our stiffness matrix of a single plate. Okay. Now, remember that uh, the data on 1, on 4, on 7, and 10, those are due to... Uh, 
the vertical ano, right the, the vertical uh, um, the vertical displacement or corresponding to the vertical force because two and three is rotation right so one is omega or sorry uh, the vertical displacement vertical displacement so right so we have a vertical displacement here vertical displacement here here and here okay uh, of course so this is uh, the vertical displacement at one is this the vertical displacement at two is this at node three at node four that's why uh the the, the additional stiffness will contribute to K11, K44, K77, and K1010. Okay. So, and this is now my final stiffness matrix. Single plate pa lang to. This is just a single plate. Okay. Now, I will transfer that to my second SMART code. I will copy paste here. Okay. And then I will iterate up to the number of elements I have. In this case, we have 256 elements. So go here, play layout. That's a total of 256 elements. Okay. But uh, in this problem, I'll be using MATLAB because SMAT uh, is not able to, to calculate this many uh, many number of elements because uh, the, the total number of nodes is if you notice it's 289 that's the total number of nodes and that dictates the size of our element right so if i have the number of nodes 289 so my my system stiffness matrix absolute stiffness matrix will be 289 times 3 which is what 867 so this is the absolute stiffness matrix 867 by 867 so remember our formula is p equals sd so if this is 867 by 867 and so therefore my output is 867 by 1. my force vector is also 867 by 1. okay so to solve this displacement of s inverse p okay so we will assemble the stiffness matrix which is an 867 by 867 and then uh, invert that, invert that matrix, then multiply to the force vector, which is 867 by 1. Okay. So I'll just show using SMAT so you can see the, the numbers. So if, if this is the, the, the stiffness matrix of a single plate, um so these are the incidents of our plate okay and uh so using this yeah so i have uh i input here enlarge this so i have a 256 oh sorry uh, elements now 289 nodes uh, ignore this so my force is this one y 433 because if you notice the loading is applied at node 145 okay that's applied to node 145 so so if this is 
145. So the degrees of freedom there is 435, right? Multiply lang sa 3. So this is my concentrated load. So the vertical, the vertical displacements, degrees of freedom corresponds to 433. Okay, because 434 and 435 is rotation, is our rotation. 433 is the vertical displacement. That's why the force is applied at node or degrees of freedom, 433. Okay, and it's 4,000 kilonewtons. And then this is the node coordinates from STAAD. And the, the element numbering, this one, I got this from STAD also, from here. This one, okay? But take note that uh, I switch the numbering here. No, I, I didn't follow STAD procedure because I am consistent with uh, the derivation of stiffness matrix three, one, two, four. So remember, this is how we derive the stiffness matrix of a single plate. So we started from this point, okay? One, two, three, four. So to be consistent with uh, uh, the incidence, so I should switch this column in the beginning. Okay, so after inputting that here in the MATLAB, and this uh, this is our actual computation of stiffness matrix. Yeah, this one. This is our stiffness. Uh, Matrix. Okay. This is the P inverse or the, the phi matrix, the constant matrix. This is the double integral part. Okay. This is the B matrix. And take note uh, thickness 0 0.7, size both 0.25. Okay. So using that, I'll run this. And this is the corresponding uh, deformation. Okay. So this is consistent with our stand. So the load is applied at the midpoint. So therefore, the maximum displacement is at the midpoint also. And looking at stand, the maximum deformation is six millimeters okay six millimeters at node 145 so let's check here um, displacements at degrees of freedom 433 and we obtain almost six millimeters displacement also okay now let's try to check the the moment okay. moment here somewhere here maybe we can show global moment and so this is the global moment x so the most stressed portion is of course at the midpoint because that's where the applied loads uh, is located. So I'll check the moment here, center stresses. So 836 kilonewton meter per meter. Okay, so I'll try to copy that here. So let's say this is the applied load. 
So meaning the, the stresses here is 836 MX and MY. So we can say this is 836. Uh, this is also 836. For, uh, so if this is our 4,000 kilometer. Okay. Uh, if we also check the surrounding plates, you will, you will obtain the same values, okay? Because uh, due to symmetry, right? So meaning uh, all plates here at the vicinity of the load is experiencing 836 kilonewton meter per meter of moment. And uh, what are those plates? So that's 120, 136, 121, so that's 120, 136, 121, what else? 137. So let's check the moments of those plates. So using this command, yeah, I use that because remember to obtain the moment, this is my formula, okay? I need to divide by the, the size of the, the plate. So this is 120, okay? So we're getting uh, 841, right? So which is uh, very near, you know? oh, sorry, 836 versus 841 in our uh, MATLAB Go using just a rectangular plate bending element. 12 degrees of freedom per plate. Okay. How about uh, 136? Let, let's try 136. So yeah, still the same. 840 versus 836. Okay. How about one, 137? Yeah, still the same. 836 versus 845. Okay. So remember instead it's using a, a more, uh, instead is using a more advanced plate element. Unlike in our MATLAB code, we're just using a rectangular thin plate bending element. We're just using a rectangular thin plate bending element. 12 DOX per plate. How about uh, this one? So let's try it here. Plate number 51. So we're getting 54 and 102. 54, 102. Plate 51. Yeah, almost the same. 55, 109. Okay. So with that, uh, we were able to to obtain the same uh, value of moment and displacement using just a rectangular thin plate bending element 
Okay, which is now comparable to a commercial software like Stat. 